with that voice. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. Okay. Welcome, welcome, everyone. We have uh, with us today one of our favorites, one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Let's speak for others. <laughs> Dr. Robert Robinson, Bob Robinson, going to give us three glorious weeks on creation, what God did for us, what God wants from us, uh, we can all benefit from that. There he is. So. Yes. She's okay. tinkering. Okay. All right. Would you uh, leave this in prayer? Yes. Come on, Emily. Don't be so standoff. <laughs> <laughs> your own Bible? Yes. Yep. So let's begin with prayer. Let's thank God first for bringing us back together. There's something about God that wants people to be together and wants them to care for one another and to care for God when we get together. And we thank God for a spirit that draws us always together in care, in love, and also with a purpose, always to move towards God and move towards God, and when we move towards God, to find our neighbors as well. Help us always to follow that path. It's the blessings that we each receive, the goodness that we find in our lives, the goodness of family, friends, and our life in the world. Help us always to be grateful and to live that gratitude in ways that others can see. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sometimes <laughs> this is like old friends I haven't seen in years ago. That I was thinking about it this morning. I thought, well, no worries. As soon as we get started, it'll be like you know, like right. we've been together. And even with new folks that I haven't met before, it doesn't take long to get to feel like we've known each other forever. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm really happy to be here. Um, let me introduce a little bit, and then we'll talk. Most of what we want to do is talk about the Bible. The only reason this computer is here is uh, I said uh, I don't carry a Hebrew Bible around with me because it's all here electronically, and it has all everything. It's just astounding. So if we get into Hebrew, I can. I can. I don't think we will, but if we happen to, uh, anybody has a question, I can go look it up. Um, um, I think it's always absolutely natural when we're talking about creation to start in the beginning. Where else would we start? And so that takes us back to the beginning of the first, very first words of, of Genesis. Some of you will have other slightly different words. We have different translations now uh, for the beginning of the, of the Genesis story. Um, and I think there, uh, the biblical creation story really has two different focuses. One is to place uh, God in the world in properly with God in relationship to the world, say, oh, well, you know, well, God, so what's God's relationship to the world? What's, what's, how do we understand God's relationship to the world? And so that's, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's the, you know, that's really the first question that, that uh, the, the Bible wants to say, oh, is, is how is God stand related to the world? And then the, the second one is the one that's really important to us, which is how do we stand related to the world? Where do we, how do we find our place? Once we understand that God created it, how do we find our place within it? What does it tell us uh, about where we are in the world? Where are we located? How do we, what's our relationship with the world when we understand it as created by God? So that's the, those are the two uh, focuses. And then I thought, as I, as I was thinking about it, I thought really we have a preliminary question before we start to talk. And that is, um, it's always the kind of the question of why do we care? And yeah. why are we so interested in, in well, what, whatever you want to call it, the beginning or origins or creation? Why? Why are we interested in it? Most of the time, we're quite content to live day to day. We wake up in the morning, we decide what we're going to do for the day. I make a little notes. Hey. I'm very late. I'm sorry. No, no we're problem. just starting, honey. Yeah. Oh, utterly welcome. <laughs> Great to see you. So I thought the first thing we ought to do before we do it is, you know, what do we hope to get from this? What do we, why are we concerned with origins? Why do we talk about it? What do, what do we expect to find out since most of us function pretty much day to day? 
you wake up and I need to go. I usually have a little card that tells me, you know. <laughs> I'm addicted to three by five cards. So, <laughs> and those cards start usually start the day that I write. You know, I write them in the morning. That's what I'm going to do today. So most, yep, yep. See, so most of us work day to day, and then and then all of a sudden, you know, we come to church and we're talking about origins, beginnings, and I thought the first thing we ought to do for, is just talk a little bit about why. Why do we talk about that? Why do we care? What do we hope to find out when we talk about beginnings? <laughs> <laughs> now there's a ringer that's well to you on this element, but I think that is our first question. What what why does this matter? Why does it matter? What do you want an answer? I do. <laughs> I do. And I want your answer because I've got some, but I'm not well yeah, when you please. when you look at it, every when you think about it, everyone's interested in ancestry. They you know, mm -hmm. they're where what are my uh roots? Yeah, and uh, I have a lot of Neanderthal. I want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> and just out of just, and if you and Neanderthals were afraid of heights, and I am afraid of heights. Oh, so. Yeah. So oh, there you are. That's good. Let's oh, let's explore that. So why why are you interested in the ancestry? I mean, why is it just curiosities? I mean, we have to. Well, lots of what we do, we pursue is curiosity. I'd like to know this, you know, I'd like to know who my great, 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 great grandparents did, you know, who came over on the Mayflower. Right. right. So, uh, so is it curiosity or is there something deeper than that? Oh, I think it's much deeper. I, I think in terms of a, a person who has been adopted, mm. who wants to know who their biological parents right. are, right. Well, and will mm. go to the ends of the earth just to find out who where they came from, who they are. Push it again, why? Why do they care? I mean, they grew up in a family, if they're deaf kids, they grew up in a family, they know that family, so they have that knowledge. And yet you're right, most, a lot of them, at least recently, it used to be they couldn't, yeah. but at least recently, a lot of them have pursued, well, who's my biological line? Yeah, biological and I think that's family. innate. Nobody teaches them that or, tells them that that that's something that comes from within there's a longing uh and you're right it, it, it's more so now because it's more possible because of the laws because of technology mm -hmm. dna etc etc which is another metaphor for our approach to scriptures our approach to god you know because we, we used to think in terms of limits and boundaries you know with respect to at some sort of a deep personal relationship with scripture or the God of the Old Scripture, whereas now uh, there's the means, but also the desire to to learn more, to do more. A lot. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I, but push it. I mean, let's push it. Why? I mean, well, I like. Why do we? Why do we do that? Why would the person who's adopted want to know about their birth parents, other than just you know, it, it does give some identity. It gives some identity, but so that's part of it. Mm -hmm. No identity, but usually there's more going on than that. Go ahead, yeah, please. Um, one reason might be health concerns mm -hmm. or yeah, uh, medical <clears throat> traits that you might <clears throat> want to know more about. Right? Do I have a predisposition to that's the word mm -hmm. X Y Z? Yeah. And or if I do, why did this know? happen? Did my mother have this? Mm -hmm. I wish I could ask her about that. She's gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. or I, I just think personality traits too. Yes. You know, you want to know oh, yeah, why yes. you are so, like, temperamental or short on, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, or um, or just whatever the way you act. You know, is it innate? Is that something I've inherited? And I have to overcome or you know or no. am i happy with it or you know i think that's so important yeah it's like finding your baseline isn't it yeah I mean, what did yeah. we always nature and nurture and we always think that it's a combination of the two but if you don't know who your biological parents are you don't know your nature yeah. you don't know the nature part but of it but you also know as an adopted child which i have witnessed and this is how i think of god i i like the fact that i was not an accident with god that he purposely wanted to have us, to create us. And 
I have been in the presence of, of a mother and father telling their child that they were adopted and they want them to know that this was the most wonderful choice that they ever made yeah was to adopt yeah. this, this person you know and when I see, when I saw that it made me think of God that I not that I'm an adopted child of God but I am a child of God oh. and he chose to create us no it's good uh, it's a so that's you know that's about value where your value comes from and yeah so now let's go back to creation what else can we add from creation there's all of this going on in creation identity and why are we the way we are i mean what do we what do we get by nature what do we add to it by by uh, nurture so all of that has something to do with creation i mean if, if birth is defining for us the idea would be all the everything that came before, all the generations that came before that would also be kind of defining. And it would be like going back to the origins. What was set, what was set at the beginning? Well, I mean, we can't, I always think of evolution too, you know? Sure. And, and, uh, you know, how, how we're, I mean, that, that's part of thinking about the creation too, is, is the evolution to me. We evolved mm -hmm. further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think of creation also is what do I really need? Because God created and gave us all that we really need via evolution or however. A while back, we had a, a seminary. Oh, she was in the fall. Becca Earl oh, yeah. came in and talked to us about minimalism. That impacted on me so much. Mm -hmm. Minimalism? Well, <laughs> artistic minimalism. Or? Well, just in the sense that you know, simply living. Oh, simply. okay. Oh, living yeah, simply. Yeah. And uh, okay. she was telling <laughs> us, and I'm sitting there thinking, I have so much stuff. Yeah. One oh, person geez. in my house. You know, I can't blame anybody else but myself. And that really put me on a mission. That for three years now I have been. You're still doing it. <laughs> still yeah, that's embarrassing. I still am doing it. Yeah. But nonetheless, but I think, but taking it back to creation and God, not only did He create us, I believe, because He wanted to, but He gave us everything that we would need. And, and that's really important. Because then the question. And that's why we should take care of it. Yeah. What were we given? I mean, what was it that we're given? What's our again? What's our baseline? What's provided? what goes back beyond us that we can read in a way what, that we can rely on because I think origins is also about what can you rely on what can you trust things that are set at creation when they're created unless there's something dramatic that happens they persist and continue to be in the backdrop of our experience the base of our experience unless climate you know, we kill everything with the climate. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know. No, it, and it's it's you know we're just starting to contemplate that. Although not really, you know, you know when I first started to think that things could be totally different. Back, back in the Cold War, when we were competing with Russia and we were building bombs faster than you know we were you know, sort of having people. And the idea was was current that if we had a nuclear war, that would obliterate everything. Right. And it, it, that's the kind of thing that would thrust at would take would thrust at creation. Right. That you could undo. It. You could right. actually undo creation by blowing it up, making the earth uninhabitable. Mm -hmm. You could undo creation, and it really throws you back on the idea of well, what do we rely on in creation if that we now have the possibility of destroying it either, I don't, I think we don't worry about the nuclear threat as much as we used to, but now we're onto a new threat, which is, looks like it's equally significant that it's going to change our understanding of how we are in the world. So that's a good thing, but it, then, it, then you start to think, well, what do we what do we what what are we trusting in? What do we what do we need to trust in? Where did it come from? And we're back to origins. We're back to origins. So with that as background, those are kind of that makes it a serious question. How do we when we think about creation? We're really thinking about things that matter. It's not just like sort of 
dealing with a story. Well, what's the story say? Mm -hmm. It's about it's about the base of our trust in the world, our sense of being in the world, of what the world is like and how it was set up for us and what we receive from God and like all that's at play. Mm -hmm. And those are those are big questions. And I think thanks for the mention yeah. of climate change because yeah. you know, there's the seriousness of the questions. Yeah. It's not anymore a given that it just the world just God created it and it just goes on forever. Hopefully, yes, we're smart and people do what people do and all that, but it's now an it's now an alternative. Please do. There is so much. I go by Paul. Uh, <laughs> there, there is so much that we naturally that we naturally seem to disagree about. Yes. And I just think that it, we in Stone Harbor with my nephew, uh -huh. who believes that the world was made in 80 days. 80 days. Eight days. Eight days. Eight days. Eight days. And the whole time I kept thinking, how can I answer this guy? Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Where does the eighth day come yeah. in? I'm curious. Well, seven. Seven. Oh. Six. 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 The rest of on seven. Right. right. Six oh, days six of days. actual work. But Sally, work. does he believe that those are seven? 24 hour days? He does. He does. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you know, one way to I know. I know. You talk about the dinosaurs. He said there are dinosaurs living today. I know a few. <laughs> <laughs> right answer. That's the right answer. Listen, I, you know, I don't want to get into this because I don't think it's a real life problem for us unless you go to visit your nephew. Yeah. 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 I, 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 wow. There are people who believe us, and God bless them. It, it makes sense of their world, and they can it square it with the world. I don't know what to say. It must somehow work. I have no way of. There are a lot of people like that. I know. I know. There are a lot. And you can't, if you want to maintain a nice relationship with that person, you have to tread lightly. You know, bite your tongue. You have avoid to bite religion. your tongue. Yeah, avoid that. My That's mother always told me that. Family. Don't talk yes, politics yes. or religion. You just can't. No, and, and, I, and I get yeah. that. I mean, I, I get that. But I don't see how you. I mean, I have lots of arguments for why that is not possible. We all do. I mean, you just have to, you have to, you know, you talk about um, the whale swallowing Jonah, it, you know, you have, it's Jonah having to swallow a whale in order to, to, to believe that. And I think it's a really profound misunderstanding of what we have in the Bible. The, uh, uh, my reading of the first chapter of Genesis, it's a poem, and I have arguments for that. It could take you, the Hebrew starts out in a very poetic way, the word, the wordings, the letters, are all rhyming right at the beginning. It starts out Bereshit bara Elohim. Bere bara Elohim, which is the last letter. The other, that's that's a poetic introduction to me. So we have a poem, and we don't have a scientific treatise. Right. And I can, but you can argue that with people till you're blue in the face. And it won't make any difference because that story in the way they're interpreting it is in fact holding their life together. Yeah, right. It is their it is their uh, kind of framework for the, for the yeah. world. And this is a good example. When you have counterindications, you find a way to fit that counter, you know, so you can't argue with it. You know, well, I, I finally came to the point where I said, you know, the most important thing is love. And where do you see love is in part of this? No, it, but I don't think, I mean, I don't, I don't have any, you know, I don't have the magic answer. So you could, you know, kind of convince them that they go, oh, yeah, like I'm all, all wrong. Yeah. It just is, it's, it's too much of a worldview thing where it's embedded and it, it, it is the whole worldview and it holds it all together. And in some ways, I think if you're, if you are isolated enough, it can maybe work. What I worry about is when it doesn't work. Like a lot of that kind of too simplistic 
but also oh, these people group themselves together. So they support each other. That's right. You know, they're very fundamental and they, you know, believe it that way. And they all believe in that, just like we yeah. believe, That's we, right. believe we support our, each other. Yeah, and it's preached to them and and taught to them and and, oh. and that's yeah, that's right. And I just don't know what to do about it. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you. And I'm, you know, I'm you know what? I think you have to it. go back to relationships, and that is one of the most important things. You have to keep your relationship with those people, Sally. You got to keep your relationship with your nephew. And you know, just disregard the other, and just remember that relationships are more important. It is, I think, possible to demand respect in turn. I mean, mm -hmm. as you respect another person's yes, yes. System, to say I don't yeah. agree with that. I right. You just agree to disagree. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, right. like I said, I have it with my nephew and my family, and we just. Of kind of avoid it, you know. Yeah. We we have a loving family, and we have to focus on the family that we have, and and just try to deal with the differences we have. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I don't think we have to do is imply that we believe exactly the same. I don't right. think because that that, 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 that yeah. worries me about compromising our own faith. And it is I think it's perfectly acceptable to ask for the same respect you're granted. I don't agree with you. I don't see it like that. I have got my work does work that way. And and you need to respect that. I respect what you're doing, and now we will talk about that more. Right. And I have found this phrase works beautifully, and it does not seem to be as combative as the word agree or disagree. I have said I don't share your views. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's so good. you're not putting the person down. You're, you're just saying, I I hear what you're saying. I just don't share that view. And that usually has worked for me. Yeah. My my thirteen year old granddaughter is fond of saying, "You do you, and I'll do me." Yeah. <laughs> We've all heard this, right? Yes. So, and I'm I'm we just laugh about it. Yeah. No, and you can. I mean, I you can, and and there is something kind of very <laughs> Christian about it. The fact that we don't, you know, we don't. I'm not so arrogant as to overrule people who care about. It. And in but, the final analysis, like you say. What does it matter? It, well, it does. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to say is it really does because I always my my own elitism is to say that the, the simple seven days creation, six days creation, a day of rest, taken literally breaks down that you keep running into things that it just won't explain. And what I worry about is. Then what happens to your faith when that, if that, if this is baseline, if what you're doing is developing a baseline of faith, and the baseline gets challenged, what happens to the whole structure that's built on it? And and then if it falls down, then I think to premise our faith on a kind of an acceptance of that reading is to make yourself very vulnerable. I mean, in the in the world, in a world which really does revolve about a different way of understanding where geology actually matters, where, you know, science, science, science actually matters. Yeah. And most people encounter that. And so I, I do worry about it, but if, if you are in a, a sufficiently isolated and then it probably it should well be done. I don't know. I'm not real comfortable with it because it sounds like well, you're judging it, but I, I'm thinking I'm not judging it, but that Ultimately, reality is going to stand in judgment on it. Let's talk about uh, Genesis 1. And I think the, 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 the way to, to begin, since we're looking at beginnings, is um, simply to say what's, what's there in the beginning. What's the beginning start with? And to get there, you only need to read the first verse. So, so if somebody is willing to just read the first verse, we'll talk about that for a little bit. I've been accused of never getting past the first verse. But, uh, we'll talk about that. But somebody read just the first verse. And we may have different translations. I expect, you know, these are all in RSV, so they'll have a different mm -hmm. uh, translation than what I'm used to. Ruth, would you read that? 
In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth. And others will have maybe in the beginning God created a little more familiar because in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And I actually think that's the appropriate translation. This is when. There's no when in there as far as I can I can tell. I know why it's translated that way. It's sort of under uh, some scholarly pressure, but uh, I don't think it's actually true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, uh, either one, it'll work out about the same. The the question is. Well, if we're going to start with the beginning, uh, what's in the beginning? What? God. 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 Yeah. God. Yeah. In the beginning. God. In the beginning. God. Anything else? Anything else? There was else? nothing. <laughs> that comes in the second verse. Oh, okay. sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Like, you can't jump in your head. Huh? You can't jump in your head. Yeah, at least in the first half, <laughs> at least in the first half verse. Yeah. Well, it makes me think that God was there. I mean, we say, yeah, God, but when we say in the beginning, so it, it gives me comfort that he's always been. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. He has always been, and I don't need to put a beginning and end to it or a date or a byline, but it just makes me think God has always been. Well, so in terms of the story, it's, is there anything else there? Is there anything else in present? That sentence? In the in the even the first half sentence, when we just get started, it, the beginning when or in the beginning, God, either way we do it, is there anything else? No. Well, it's it just makes the earth seem very special. Pardon? It makes the earth seem very special because it's named not as the planets, it's Heavens and earth. The heavens and earth weren't there. No, no, it's no, here. no, and in fact, that's an important point. Yeah, I didn't hear what she said. The heaven yeah. and earth were not there. Yeah, right. Yeah. It was just God. That's all. I, what? Just. No. And that's it. Just God <laughs> was there. And that's you know? and so, that's the statement. I mean, that's the any God. The lesson. Yeah. In, in, if we're trying to say what what's the what's the ground? What is the grounds? Everything. What what, what is the ground and what's there? Oh. Uh -huh. Else. Yeah. So can you say yeah? You know, can you ground anywhere else? Can you ground your no, no, you have to. It all goes back. That's and that's you know powerful and important. It's God. It, everything starts with God. I only think of in the beginning when or however you do that. The reality that it wants to portray is you start with God. So that's the ground, that's the foundation. Everything is founded on. And that's, you know, that's so obvious. <laughs> we think it's so obvious, but it isn't at all obvious. It isn't all at all obvious. There are other stories of creation that start in different places. Right. You know, that start with things already in existence and then the gods get busy. But when my grandson starts his nonsense, I just say, <laughs> and I wrote from his confirmation card, in the beginning, God. That's right. You know? So, Go ahead and think other things, but God, God was God. That's right. And that's the whole, I mean, that's the whole point of the, of the creation story. If, you, if, if you're tracing things back, the way we usually do think about things is if, if we're trying to get meaning from it, we trace it back, trace it back, trace it back, trace it back until we can't trace it back any further. And everything that comes after is kind of, well, okay, that this came and then that came. In. But then when you get to the, like, the beginning, you get back to something that doesn't change and doesn't you know, it's just, it's there. And so the question is, what, what is that? And the Bible doesn't, you know, doesn't leave that as an unanswered question. That's an answered question. When you go back, you trace everything back to the beginning, what, what do you find? God. It's all God. It's all God. It's only God. Nothing else. God's not talking to somebody else. God is not... And it's powerful when it's important, utterly, utterly important. It's the most important thing. If nothing else can, take, can fit in that place. Nothing can share it. Nothing can modify it. Nothing impinges on it, might change it a little bit. It's all and then immediately we go to 
the next step in the beginning or when God created the heavens and the earth. And what about that? Is there anything beyond heavens and earth? I mean, is there something else someplace? At that moment? No. And it's just heaven and earth. Yeah. That's the most important. Yeah. Well, heaven, heaven is kind of limitless. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's eternity. Yeah. It's beyond our comprehension. Earth, in a, in a reverse way, is kind of limitless, too, when you start digging in in a scientific way on how everything works, how it all comes together, uh, and when there's a dysfunction in, I don't care, geology or, you know, uh, uh, human physiology, you know, how your eye works and all that stuff. Either way, whether you go out to eternity or you dig down forever, it, it's limitless and it's all made by God. God's the only one who knows how that works. We've got scientists and researchers who can tell you a lot about the human body and the function of the organs and how everything comes together, but they can't replicate it. They can't say how it was made. Uh, only God can do that. So, you know, it, it, the discussion is worthwhile if you're exploring the wonders of God. If you're trying to figure out God or be God, you're wasting your time. Well, you know, it, it looks to me like this is trying to put limits on, on uh, the range of our thought. In the beginning, God created mm. heavens mm. and earth. And mm. we have, you know, we use phrases like, I moved heaven and earth to, to do something, you know? <laughs> and what do we mean by that? I, I did everything possible. One of the thing that I didn't do. Limitations. And, and it's... With our limitations. Yeah, yes. and I think that's what's going on here. I mean, it's just like, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And then if you ask the question, well, did, is there something else later on that got did it? Or is there something else somewhere else? And what's the, what seems to be the answer? No, 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 no. This, this is everything in the beginning. So you don't have to, so what's it telling us? Well, you don't have to worry about something out here or somewhere else or, you know, coming in from someplace else where you don't have to worry about that because Heaven and earth is everything. So it's inclusive, right? It's, 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 it's inclusive. It includes everything. So in, and now you've got God and you've got everything. And where are we? We're not there yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> where are we going to be? The politics of it. At the very end. But we're going to be in that world. So it's, it's, if, if we think in pictorial terms, it's sort of pictorially saying everything. And there isn't anything, there's no frame to the picture. And there's nothing beyond the frame to the picture. It's just everything is there. It's just what it is. And so I think that tells us something about where we're going to fit in. Because we don't have to think about something coming from another angle, or coming from another galaxy. Or something like that, everything is included. The solar system and everything. everything. It doesn't know about the solar system. They probably still think that the, 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 you know, the sun rotates around the earth. So they don't, you know, they're, they're not worried about the science. What they're worried about is what's the scope of God's activity? Boundless. Boundless. And is there anything outside the scope? See, that's the important question. Is there anything outside the scope of no. God's creative no. activity? No. And the answer comes back, no. So do you have to think about that or do you, do you speculate? Is it, do you speculate on it? What makes speculation on that kind of, you know, kind of a mind game? What you need to know is God created everything. And that's your, that's your sphere. That's your scope. That's the scope of each. Let's look at the next verse. That gets really interesting here. <clears throat> Some. But the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. I just find this the most interesting oh. <laughs> and the yeah. most interesting mm -hmm. verse. Because the first, it's almost, I said, uh, I, I think of this as poetry. And 
the first part is very poetic language, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's not concrete historical <laughs> 16 nanometers and that kind of language. This is really much, very much poetic imagery. And what's it in any job? What, what do we have in, in turns the corner, it says, God made the heavens and the earth, and then it says, focuses in, and says, and the earth was water and formless and void. Formless and void, it has to be an image, doesn't it? Has to be what? An image. image. No, it has to be no. a poetic image, because can you picture formless and void? No. Can, will you imagine, I mean, if, even if you close your eyes and try to, to you know, kind of imagine it, will anything pop into your kind of internal vision? It's formed. Everything that has form. Right. Everything has form. That's kind of basic. So water bottles have form, rooms have form, land masses have form, clouds, everything has form. And the earth is round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't have form yet. It doesn't. So this has got to be. This has got. I think that indicates this has got to be. It, it certainly is not descriptive, you know. And and there were ten thousand miles of ocean, and there were five thousand land masses, and all that kind of stuff. It's not descriptive in that sense. It's evocative. And what's it evoke? I mean, what is there before God gets busy? Making light and everything else. There's wind. There's wind. There's going to be wind come into it. Yeah, we've had wind. Um, yeah. There's water. There's water. It, it doesn't have form, so yeah. it's just sort of ugh, crashing and flowing. And, and how do we respond to that? I mean, what does it? It's just does water have form though. Kind of, I don't know. Well, it, 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 it just makes it powerful. In other words, uh, mm -hmm. yes, God of love, but also God of unlimiting power. It, it is, it is power, and in its power, it's frightening, isn't it? I, I think this image is just fairly frightening, isn't it? That the, the, the earth is formless and void and Darkness is darkness. Is, That's what goes I keep into saying. Well. I come, I keep coming back to if if everything is dark around you, you just sort of like, oh. what's there? It's frightening. It's scary. What could be out there? What even just walking through a room if you don't know where you're going? What am I going to bump into? How am I going to you know? No, I mean, no, just, we all have it. Oh. Most of us have. Have any of you ever been in a situation where your eyes never adjust to the darkness? <laughs> There was some amusement thing I did and it scared the daylights out of me. My eyes never, ever adjusted to the darkness. And that's why I think of the darkness here. On my honeymoon, I went to Lincoln Caverns in the center of the state. Yeah. My wife, we were down and we had this young college age woman who was taking us in the guide. And all of a sudden, she, it was all lighted up down inside. And all of a sudden, she flipped off the switch. Uh -huh, and she yeah. says, oh, yeah. You are in the presence of very direct. You're in the presence of total darkness. That's it. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. you are exactly you're just, right. you're like just disoriented. You yeah. don't know. You, you, you're afraid. You don't want to yeah. take a step. You go this way. You go you're just this. And so this, I think it's a fairly frightening image. I, I mean, I it, it, yeah. absolutely. And, and, and it, so the question is, you know, if we're talking about creation, why start us off with a frightening image? I mean, that, that you know, why do this? Why tell us that God created the heavens and earth? That makes us feel real good. Mm -hmm. God's, you know, God's God. <clears throat> and then it says, yeah, but it's to show beginning. power. Yeah, mm -hmm. show power. I, I think it just sort of emphasizes that you're going back to because the only thing that's in control of this void is God. It's got to be. Yeah. And it, I think it's important that we have a threatening image in our, as a part of our understanding of creation. How much of our world is frightening? 
Yeah. Yeah. More and more all the time. More yeah. and more. I mean, uh, I see you're you're giving grants to people who got it by, <coughs> yeah. by yeah. 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 Frightening? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Suppose you have a story that's supposed to be telling what the world is like and there is no nothing frightening in it. Nothing threatening in it. <coughs> what's your idea? What <clears throat> what's it sound like? That's not bad. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, the I'm Renaissance painters of yeah. creation portray God in a very threatening way. Here it's not God. No. It's just the substrate. You know, the, the world before God gets busy on it is has threatening stuff in it. Darkness. Mm -hmm. This dark is the, the deep is is the deep. It's not just water, it's the deep. I always think of the yeah. deep as bottomless water. Yeah. You know, water right. doesn't have any bottom. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah. And, and so if you if you don't have this, then this then our story is going to be a fairy tale, isn't it? Or a, a kid's story. You know, nothing, no disturbances in it, no recognition that the mm -hmm. world could have any threats in it at all. You know, I I this is realism to me. And the Bible could say, okay, let's work. Let's be real. Let's be real. Be well, it real. makes it relevant. You know, all those things you're describing, then, the words that are used. Now, this may sound like an oxymoron, but I think of it as the absence of God. Okay. Um, and that's how I've always pictured yeah. hell. Because heaven is being in God's presence. Hell is the absence of God. And, and you're talking about this, this uh, disorientation. What you're one of the things you're describing is what's called enhanced interrogation, uh, in more commonly called torture. <laughs> it is, is, is sensory deprivation where people can't oh, yeah. see, yeah. can't see hear. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 it's a totally void environment, and it's a way of breaking them down because what's accomplished with this deprivation is disorientation. That's exactly right. And that's the absence of God. Yeah. Yep, and it's 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 the it's the absent. You know, it's not the total absent. Oh, there is a sequence here. You know, we we had we have the big picture. God created the heavens and earth. That's really oriented. Yeah, nothing's outside of it, that picture. And then it focuses in and says it's almost sequential. But before God got busy, you know, sort of working on it, this is what we have. And what we have is this threatening, this threatening kind of. of reality, uh, which you, know, you need, we need that. I think we need that if this is not going to be a cartoon. I think it sets apart um, a contrast. Do you want this, which is the dark void, or do you want what God teases out, the light, the, what comes next, the waters, the da da da. It gets better. It does. So it you have does. a choice here. But it doesn't That's try to right. convince you that there's, that there's nothing that scares you in the world or, or threatens you in the world. It's not trying to, you know, give you an unreality. You know, we were talking about what reality we live in. This was trying to give us a reality where it corresponds to what we experience. If I don't, if I get hit with a tornado, if I get swept up in Ida, if I see that storm hitting my home, and I've got a story that says, and God made everything beautiful and nothing ever happened in it. And I'm going, so where am I now? What world am I in? I'm not in the world. That, and this says, no, there was, you know, God recognized that there is this, <clears throat> these forces, powers. And then you get, you, what you, you get what you need, what comes next. A formless void on, on the dark. So you get light, deep darkness. The light that and then... And then there was light. No, before that even. Before that? that even. We did that already? <laughs> so we haven't done that yet. No, we haven't gotten to the light yet. We have a wind. A wind. And then God when said, let there be light. Yeah. And I think that's the spirit. Yeah. It, the, the, uh, it's going to have to do with it. It's the word that could mean spirit or, or wind. And, but the important thing is, whether it's not whether it's spirit or wind, it's where's it come from? That. God. It's associated with God. And what's God doing? Is God is God terrified by the darkness and the deep and everything like that? It's, it's cleaning it up. Yeah. And 
doesn't it seem like God's very comfortable with this? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, God doesn't seem to be, oh, oh, oh my word, oh, my word. It, there's nothing like that. It's just God, and it, it'll say sweeping. The, the, the word here is, is only used a couple times in the whole Bible. And the other time that it's most prominently used is of um, an eagle who's landing on its nest. You know how, and if you've ever seen, you know, Disney movies or whatever, when the eagle comes down, it kind of it comes screaming in, and when it gets close to the to the, it throws on the brakes and it sort of flutters and hovers and it comes down real gently to bring the fruit to the. That's the word. That's the other use of the word. God does not create himself. Pardon? God does not create himself. No, no. God's presupposed from the very beginning. Yeah. That's right, and the, and the question the question that's being answered here is okay. We've got this darkness, deep, all this threatening stuff. Now, where's God, and what's God doing? How's God related to that? And immediately, it tells us God is hovering above it, you know, not threatened by it, not terrified, not unhappy with it. Even I mean, just well, it's not, there. Mm -hmm float like a wind over the water you know this would have helped moses <laughs> have, have his people reread <laughs> this section this this I, I, i'm being facetious but i'm not being facetious because all the glory the power the magnitude of who god is is right from the beginning it's yeah. not something that was created you know 100 years afterwards that the earth was functioning from the beginning you, you see that. and of course periodically you forget that as you find over and over again in the bible yeah yeah well that's why <coughs> moses wrote the book of genesis is so that it would be there as, <laughs> as, as a reminder it, it it's so carefully told First, it describes the reality that we have to face, which is that there is violence in the world. And then it answers the question that we fundamentally need, need to know, which is where is God in regard to that? And, um, and, and it says God's just... His voice. Hmm? His voice. Coming up. Yep. But right now, God's just sort of... Yeah, just hovering. Just floating. Peaceful. But he's there. Yeah. But is there? Okay. See, that's the thing. And so, what you get is you don't get you don't get um, a world with two powers within it. You don't get well. There's an evil power over here that's destructive, and you know, and <laughs> you've, got, you've got God. The, the the threatening world is just presupposed, and God made it and is comfortable in it. And that's what you need to know. <laughs> I think that's what we need to know about our world. Not we, we don't need to deny that there are things that scare us about the world and, in fact, injure us in the world. They have the potential to injure us. If you don't, if you deny that, you're talking about an unreal picture. What you need to know is God in, still in there, or is God in some ways isolated from that world, alienated, or in combat with that world. See, then you've got a then you've got a conflict model of creation where God's totally continually fighting against forces that are destructive, trying to overcome them. And you know, you just have to hope that God wins. But maybe God won't always win, then you're gonna be in trouble. So that's not the relationship. It's this is real, but God's in it. I I I just really appreciate that as a kind of biblical realism. Uh, they're not trying to they're not trying to convince you of something that, that you're experiencing. Wrong. We're trying to say, yeah, there is this stuff in the world, this bad stuff in the world. Yeah, we know God knows about it, and God is not upset with it and driven out of that. Then we get to the exciting part. The next verse. <laughs> okay, I'm not just I know. Of our time. Mm -hmm. um, but we got it. If we don't get um, that verse, we have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're left. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Isn't that lovely? That's great. I mean, it's just, it's just so, it's just so lovely. And the it's such I, a comfort. I, I, it is. <laughs> and just, uh, I, I, I promise not to, uh, uh, to bore you with Hebrew or to, you know, just talk over your head or anything like that. But the Hebrew here is really lovely. It, it's, it's even shorter than the English. It's uh, uh, Yehi or Vahi or. That's it. That could be like Yehi or. And there was like Vahi or. <laughs> Isn't it? Wow. Yehi or Vahi or. And it's just, it's just beautiful, isn't it? I mean, it couldn't be more compact. I couldn't have said it in any more compact way. That's about the two phrases that the whole world is. And then after the children's sermon this morning, I'm always going to think, well, he really needs energy. It's just such a, and, and again, it's, it's that, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about this poetically. And in the previous verse, you've had tohu vavohu, formless and void and darkness and everything like that. And then you've got God hovering it. And then you know, God's hovering there. And then out of that hovering, God starts to speak. And when God starts to speak, it just sounds really different. Mm -hmm. if, the, if, the, if the tohu vavohu the, is, the, is the Hebrew for the formless and void, and, and this is he or by he or. And it just goes, oh. It, it's a contrast. It's a real contrast to the creativity and the previous state. So that when God gets involved, it doesn't deny what's there, but it says, no, oh, I'm, I'm gentle. I'm in control. I'm don't take a whole lot of you know, just I say it and it happens. <laughs> it's just so wonderful. Yeah. It, it, it comes. And we I, I know what you're saying about it. We've got to go. But uh, the, we'll pick up again next week, and then I want to go on to beyond it. But the whole of that and uh, that first day is just so evocative. So, so there was uh, that could be light, and there was light, and you know, naming the light, and the darkness, and dividing them one from the other, so that they were put in their place, and then. Uh, with one day, and it's just, it's really, it just feels, it just, I always think that the best way to, you know, interpret is often with our bodies, and so when you're talking about the formless and void, your body goes, formless and void, darkness, and then when you get to this, your body goes, it's very visceral, this thing. It is, it's meant to be really visceral, so that you're not just thinking about creation, you're feeling what happens in creation mm -hmm. in your body. That it's that it takes the weight off your shoulders. Your, your shoulders do. Your hands expand. Everything. I mean, I think it, it does. And then all these images are images of order. Are images of, of order. I always joke that you know that what God does is the same thing I do when I decide I'm going to clean out a closet. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, it's just exactly the same thing. You pull everything out. You put it in piles. You you know, so you separate it. Is what God does, and you name it. You know, <laughs> you know. I used to use baby fruit jars with masking tape. You name everything. You name everything, and you put them all in, in place, and you make order. That's that's exactly. <laughs> God is maybe we learned it from God. <laughs> but that, it's exactly that. You, it's these are all images of how do you make order in your world, in a world. How do you create order in a world? You. Put things in their proper place. You name them so you know what they are, and then uh, this will be the last thing I say. Um, the the last phrase, the uh, and there was evening and there was morning one day. I I can't really do jump in. And there was evening, and there was morning, one day. And it's just such a beautiful kind of summary, isn't it? And there was evening, and there was morning, one. Day. You know? And it, it really is to make us feel creation, to make you feel what it's like to live in creation. It's yes. mm -hmm. one day. And now we're relaxed. We can, oh, I'm okay with this world. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable in this world. This is a reassuring world. It's orderly. And then God might skip the good. God said it's good. 
that God gives it value. All of this is just, and it is to put us properly in the world. Isn't that, I mean, it's just, where do we fit into this world? Well, I'm pretty comfortable. It also says from the beginning, we have purpose. There is purpose. Mm -hmm. This is not a random thing that is happening. This is purposeful. Yeah, and I, I, I think, it, you know, we're really not in the picture yet. We're not going to get yeah. in the picture until the sixth day. We're the last thing, which is important. We're kind of the climax of it. But we are, it's talking to us already. I mean, it's not, it's not sort of objectively laying out what happened in this. It's already using language that it knows we're going to respond to. It's, it's self-involving languages. It doesn't just go here. It comes all through actually all through. And that that's really important. So we're there, but we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. We're not mentioned yet. We're not we're six days away, five days away, five more days away. But we're it's not ignoring. We can see the road ahead. Yeah, we can see the light. The light at the end. We can see the light. No, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, well, and I, I think too, I, I think back to that dark room where you can't see anything at all and your eyes never just no, thank you. and then if somebody switches on a light it's oh, almost like oh my god god now i know where i am yeah it's a oh, yeah. i have really lunch in the day too oh please and oh. i said i was gonna leave early but i wanted to stay yeah. and hear you so i didn't leave early oh, so i'm awful thank about stopping thank you thank you to next week we can mm -hmm. go to I, I this is a a wonderful deal that we can have. Yeah, thank you all. Like, thank you very much. Different yeah. trips. So good to thank you all. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you guys are great. I, I always rely on that. <laughs> it all goes back to time. Pardon me? It all goes back to time. Yep, by time. Time. Even though it's not. It's still time. Although the time is going to come in, you know, they yeah. actually create, God actually creates time when, it create, when God creates the right. sun and the moon. It talks yeah. about the reason yeah. that God created okay. them is sort of to create time. So, it, it's almost, you're almost, at this point, you're almost outside of time, except it says, I know, but there was we're one, there was even yes. one day. So it's already introduced the concept of day. So yeah, in that yes. sense, there's time, yeah. but there aren't the markers of time yet. That's going to come more in the fourth day. It knows, what, it knows what it's doing. That's how to tell a good story.